I was just reading. We've got Nick here. We don't need to introduce Nick here. He's a, we know oh, who they, he is. They've done a nice graphic set. I'd already answered it now. I'd already Technical answered people the have conundrum. Done all, all sorts of work uh, on this. It's great when you do. You read the background notes on the, the pre-chat that guests do. <laughs> There's a bit here when Nick was asked, what did you make of Piers Morgan on Comet Relief, The Apprentice? And he said, well, he was the only contestant fired. He was fired for a misdemeanour after he was the ringleader in a prank to sabotage fellow contestant Trini Woodall's attempt. Nick says, Piers kidnapped Trini's chef on his way to the Mayfair Hotel to ensure she didn't win the task. True. Following this, she stabbed him with a biro. After that, I was very keen for him to be fired. <laughs> <laughs> that pretty much sums it up, I was there. I was there. I was yeah. there. You know what? We'll come to a bit of Canton in a minute. Yeah. You've written a book about uh, so many interesting things, actually. Mm. But on The Apprentice, the one thing I... Having done just one challenge for that comic okay. relief thing here and then done a whole series with Trump in America... Yeah. Did you know he'd done that? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it was, for contestants, utterly physically, mentally, emotionally exhausting. Yeah, it, it is. Well, the thing is, of course, the pressure on time is such mm. that they're all, you know, scrabbling around, they're trying to get camera time, and then in the middle of some huge discussion, they're drawn out away from the group to do a piece to camera. It's... A nightmare. Yeah. You did one. They're doing 12. Well, I did the 12 in America. And it was, of course it was, you did. It was a tough, did. punishing thing. You look back in totality on your life. What, yes. did, what did you think about where you've come from, where you've got to? Yeah, I think, actually, I've been blessed. Because I had a, a, a bit of a bumpy start. I was going to be a lawyer. Mm. I, I, I messed around, frankly. Um, and my dad gave me a fiver and took me to the station. And in what a sense... Age? What age? Oh, 20, mm. 21, you something like that. The big wide world. And that was it. And I made a little bit of a success of it until uh, your good friend Lord Sugar popped mm. up in 1983. Um, my company was hired to represent him. Mm. And from then on, it was terrific, really, because as you know, he's a dangerous character. Mm. Uh, it makes a lot of noise. Um, <laughs> and he's, and uh, he's a great sport. And then The Apprentice came along. I was sort of sucked into that unwillingly. Um, and from that moment on, actually, it's been a joy. Oh. Um, ten years on The Apprentice wasn't a joy. Mm. Tiring. The first nine were, oh, my yeah. word, mm. it's tiring. Because yeah. it makes you go and watch great everything, show. doesn't it? From early yeah. in the morning to late at night. But mm. the point is, you've got to be writing everything down. Yeah. And also the reaction, was it true, was it not true? And then tell him. And he said, oh, for heaven's sake, what time was it? Was this, you know, mm. Karen says it was at 8.43 and you see it, say it was 8.45. So it, it, you're absolutely mm. on your metal. You've got this book, A Life From A To Z. Yeah, it's an autobiography, really, with the, with mm. the highlights. You're in it. Good. In a nice way. What? <laughs> uh, we've been talking about resilience today, strength, bouncing back from failure. Yeah. What, what's the biggest life lesson you've got from people? Because failing and that leading to success is a massive Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Terrific boot up the backside, isn't it? And, in fact, when my dad gave me that fiver and, and sent me off to the, uh, the station, I made it my business to be unsackable by the age of 30 because I would own... Uh, a company or part of a company, I would be unsackable. And, and, and it sort of worked. So I'm Make very grateful. Make yourself unsackable. Before you go, Brexit, you, you've done yeah. a campaign for a second referendum. Why do you think we should have another one? <sighs> I put 500 quid into a higher a bus because this is this big rally on the 20th. Mm. Do you know something? We're all completely confused. Mm. We don't know what we're getting into. Yeah. And I think that at some stage, the British public when we actually see what it is, when a deal has been done, has the right to have perhaps another referendum, as long as there's got to be um, a percentage between those who want to go and those who want to stay. It's not a neck-and-neck -neck no. thing. 52, Are you with me? Yeah. Is, was not enough. I think we don't know either way, actually. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think yeah. actually, if, it, if the worst apparent worst did happen, it may work. We just don't know enough. Mm. Anyway, uh, Nick, it's you. a cracking read. Good the luck. Book. They want Susanna on countdown. I, I was Do tweeted it. this morning. Do it. Why don't they want me? <laughs> uh, Nobody wants you, Piers. <laughs>